Good morning. It's uh, the lectures uh, for a cleft lip and palate. Um, These lectures um, describe the uh, clinical pictures, presentations, and uh, management of uh, the cleft lip and palate. So the content of these lectures, briefly, it's the uh, brief introductions, the answers of cleft lip and palate, uh, embryology, etiology, presupposing factor classification, diagnosis, problems uh, uh, associated with cleft lip and palate, and uh, some famous syndromes associated with cleft. Uh, also management of cleft lip and palate, the timing of uh, management, and the preparation for that management. Okay, cleft lip and palate, uh, it is a very common congenital uh, anomalies. Uh, it's uh, second most common congenital anomalies after uh, club foot. And uh, as you see in the pictures, it's a different uh, shape of uh, uh, cleft lip and uh, palate. Okay. This is some historical uh, quotations about cleft lip and palate. Uh, broadly, the instance of cleft lip and palate is uh, one in uh, 700 lip pairs. Uh, again, cleft lip is a more common among males, and uh, cleft palates more commonly uh, among uh, females. Uh, unilateral clefts accounting for 8% of incidence and bilateral the remaining 20%. Uh, usually in the congenital anomalies we uh, like to, uh, it's, it's important to go back in the embryology. The embryology in the congenital anomalies is very important and uh, we uh, have to know uh, uh, the uh, timing of the embryological error uh, of the cleft lip and palate because uh, around the fourth, fifth, uh, fourth week of intrauterine life uh, the parenchyal arch develop uh, uh, to at the site of future neck and this is the uh, start of the uh, uh, biological uh, development of the craniofacial uh, skeleton why uh, the timing of the embryology is uh, very important because when you have a child or a baby with a cleft lip or cleft lip and palate or you have to check other uh, systems which should develop during the same periods like the hearts and the upper extremes the hand etc this is embryology of the first uh, uh, arch, mandibular arch, play a role in the development of the nasomaxillary complex. Uh, here, the mandibular arch gives rise to a maxillary process from the dorsal end. So, we have in the embryology uh, of the uh, upper lip, the upper lip embryologically developed from uh, three parts two lateral parts and the central part. The central part uh, is uh, the fulcrum and the two lateral parts of the upper lip. So uh, the while the lower lip is formed by uh, only two parts from the mandibular arch. Uh, usually it is the, uh, is the broad uh, concept, it is uh, the, the uh, development of the cleft lip. It is uh, a type of embryological error it is called failure of fusion. Failure of fusion between uh, two embryological uh, parts. Okay, so uh, if we know that the upper lip is formed by three parts and the lower lip is formed only by two parts, so the instance of the cleft lip we see in the upper lip uh, very, very common than the uh, lower lip. Almost we don't see cleft uh, in the lower lip we uh, we see the clefting in the upper belt okay this is some historical uh, quotations about cleft
palet uh, broadly the instance of clip clip and the palet is the one in uh, 700 clip pairs uh, again clip clip is a more common among males and uh, cleft palate is more commonly uh, among uh, females uh, usually in the congenital anomalies we uh, like to uh, it's important to go back into the embryology the embryology in congenital anomalies is very important and uh, we uh, have to know uh, uh, the uh, timing of the this is the embryology of the first uh, uh, arch, medullary arch, play a role in the development of the nasomaxillary complex. Uh, here, so the medullary arch gives rise to a maxillary process from the dorsal end. So we have in the embryology uh, of the uh, upper lip, the upper lip embryologically developed from uh, three parts two lateral parts and the central part the central part uh, is uh, the fulcrum and the two lateral parts of the upper lip so uh, the, while the uh, lower lip is formed by uh, only two parts from the mandibular arch uh, usually it is the uh, as a pro uh, concept it is uh, the, the uh, development of the cleft lip it is uh, a type of embryological error it is called failure of fusion failure of fusion between uh, two embryological uh, part okay so uh, if we know that but okay this is some historical uh, quotations about So we talk a lot about the embryology of the lip and palate and the embryological. Uh, usually in the congenital anomalies we uh, like to, uh, it's, it's important to go back into the embryology. The embryology in the congenital anomalies is very important and uh, we uh, have to know uh, uh, the uh, timing of the embryological error. Uh, of the cleft lip and palate because uh, around the fourth, fifth, uh, fourth week of intrauterine life uh, the parenchyal arch is developed uh, uh, to at the site of future neck and this is the uh, start of the uh, uh, biological uh, development of the craniofacial uh, skeleton why uh, the timing of the embryology is uh, very important because when you have a child or a baby with a cleft lip or cleft lip and palate or you have to check other uh, systems which should develop during the same periods like the hearts and the upper extremes the hand etc this is embryology of the first uh, uh, arch, medullary arch play a role in the development of the nasomaxillary complex um, but okay this is some historical uh, quotations about lip. so we talk a lot about the embryology of the lip and palate and the embryological
uh, usually in the congenital anomalies we uh, like to uh, it's important to go back in the embryology the embryology in congenital anomalies is very important and the this is the embryology of the first uh, uh, arch, medullary arch, play a role in the development of the nasomaxillary complex. Um. Okay, this is some historical uh, quotations about lip. So we talk a lot about the embryology of the lip and palate and the embryological. Uh, usually in the congenital anomalies we uh, like to uh, it's important to go back in this is the embryology of the first uh, uh, arch medullary arch play a role in the development of the nasomaxillary complex Okay, let's simplify the, uh, the subjects uh, here. Uh, the picture above is a unilateral cleft lip. As you see, it is different form of unilateral cleft lip and the palate. Um, here, the, the picture is unilateral uh, cleft lip. And the picture uh, in the uh, blue it's bilateral cleft lip and the palate and in unilateral and the bilateral it is either uh, complete or incomplete what is what does it mean complete or uh, incomplete uh, uh, complete it, it does mean the clifting is extended to the nasal floor as the in the picture above okay um, here the uh, clifting if there is a tissue intervening between the cleft and the nasal floor it is incomplete but if the clifting is uh, connected to our traverse uh, or continuous to the nasal floor it is complete so we have incomplete unilateral or incomplete bilateral uh, or we have bilat uh, incomplete unilateral cleft by, by or incomplete unilateral cleft
balance okay left. so we talk a lot about the embryology of the lip and the palate and the embryological start with the dental the due to clifting of the alveolus the people born with uh, different forms of uh, dental problems like tooth agenesis hypodontia the most common and uh, supernumerary uh, teeth second most common anomaly uh, animal hypoplasia hypoplasia of the teeth or uh, the cross bite cross bite like the picture down cross by the, the upper alveolar ridge is crossing away from the lower alveolar uh, edge ectopic eruption like a tooth in uh, a place uh, rather than the alveolar ridge here um, tendons towards class 3 skeletal pattern this is the picture above show the cross bite you know in the normal occlusion the upper dental arch should be closing over the lower dental arch okay and the uh, cross bites like these pictures the upper dental arch is crossing inward okay uh, posterior and the anterior cross bite this cross bite may be anterior in the anterior teeth or posterior in the posterior teeth. D bite spacing crowding protruding premaxilla. And aesthetic problems or cosmetic problems like facial disfigurement or official structures can be malformed and congenital like the nose. Uh, usually we have uh, uh, what is called cleft lip. Uh, nasal deformities nasal deformity because there is uh, anatomical uh, deformities or anatomical deficiencies in the cartilages and the skeletal support of and even soft tissue of the nose so uh, the baby uh, born with cleft lip uh, and palate he has cleft lip nasal deformities and uh, the picture blue here this girl is uh, with uh, class 3 malocclusion she has, she has retruded maxilla due to cleft uh, lip uh, and palate and uh, uh, defective growth of the maxilla uh, feeding problem this baby uh, they have problem with the feeding because they have problem in the uh, suckling and swallowing swallowing they have cleft lip uh, so they have problems for proper swallowing and cleft palate so uh, they don't have the negative uh, space for suckling and the muscles uh, which uh, propels the milk uh, to the uh, oropharynx so they have feeding problems these feeding problems um, leads uh, or result that th th those child have nutritional deficiencies nutritional problems and vitamin deficiency and uh, the oral nasal fistula uh, results in regurgitations of the milk through the nose and uh, these repeated regurgitations may um, result in uh, aspirations and uh, repeated chest uh, infection balance okay this is some historical uh, quotations about so we talk a lot about the embryology of the lip and the palate and the embryological
ماشي the man in the cleft lip and the palate actually means multidisciplinary approach those children needs social working nursing support for feeding speech therapist psychiatrist ophthalmologist pediatric dentist orthodontic for to for the dental arches dental orthodontic and plastic surgeons to repair the cleft lip and the palate and may they need a genetic counseling and ENT for the middle ear uh, schedule for treatment of cleft lip uh, uh, we repair the cleft lip usually at the uh, age of three months and we have a rule of uh, feeding problem <laughs> Okay, this is some historical uh, quotations about lip. So we talk a lot about the embryology of the lip and palate and the embryological. This picture is with the PP uh, with the Trishan Colin syndrome. They have a severe form of retruded mandible. Uh, such cases may require tracheostomy at ear. Uh, schedule for treatment of cleft lip. Uh, mm, uh, we repair the cleft. Uh, feeding. Bro this is an uh, obturator. Uh, can be uh, inserted uh, to close the cleft palate at it's, 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 it's temporarily in the early days or weeks before uh, definitive lip so we talk a lot about the embryology of the lip and palate and the embryological Um, tendons towards class 3 skeletal pattern this is the picture above show the cross bite you know in the normal occlusion the upper dental arch should be closing over the lower dental arch okay and the uh, cross bites like these pictures the ear uh, schedule for treatment of cleft lip. Uh, this is an uh, obturator C can be uh, inserted uh, to close the cleft palate. At it's, 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 it's temporarily in the early days or weeks before uh, definitive swallowing. Uh, this uh, different types of uh, surgery for palate von, von Langenberg uh, uh, VY palatoplasty furlough all these techniques are uh, based on an idea to uh, repair the muscles uh, in the midline and lengthening the palate here um, tendons towards class 3 skeletal pattern this is the picture above show the cross bite you know in the normal occlusion the upper dental arch should be closing over the lower dental arch okay needed 
surgical management alveolar cleft this is an uh, obturator C can be uh, inserted uh, to close the cleft palate at it's, 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 it's temporally okay uh, the most common complication of cleft uh, palate repair is fistula the most common most common complication after palatal repair is palatal fistula fistula or nasal fistula and uh, velopharyngeal incompetence velopharyngeal incompetence it's the incompetence of the closure of the velopharyngeal uh, uh, valve so continued velopharyngeal incompetence and this will result in a uh, speech problem okay you don't have to know anything about velopharyngeal